Apple's new Siri Pro features are confirmed ahead of WWDC. Welcome to the All Future Podcast, where we talk about all things tech, Apple, AI, humanoid robot. Uh, thank you for being here, and thank you for subscribing. We're closing in on 3,000 subs, and lots more views coming in. So if you want to, subscribe. We would really appreciate that. We would. Thank you. Uh, so what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about Apple and their AI features that they are going to be bringing, which should be enabling Siri Pro which is what we're calling the next version of Siri that should be like a big step change over previous Siri that I think most of us have been fed up with at some point. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it's now confirmed that Apple is making an LLM that will be on device. This is going to be coming at WWDC. It comes with a few caveats. The first is that it will be probably less powerful than its competitors, but it can be faster and more secure as a result. And that's because they're comparing on-device LLM with one that connects to the cloud. So it can be faster getting you a, resu a result, but can't quite do as much because it's limited to your on-device power. But then it's more secure because it's in Apple's ecosystem and it's all on your device. It's not having to go out and everything. It doesn't have to ping to servers. So this is now confirmed, which is great to hear because it gives us a really big insight into what is going to be coming and what they're going to unveil for us at WWDC. There's so many awesome just basic voice command stuff that I wish would be there mm -hmm. that isn't there right now. Like, tell me what date this thing is or like... You know, go back in my text messages and see what the address to this thing was yeah. and then give me directions to it. I would love to just use a voice command to do something like that. Mm -hmm. I don't need it to answer every single one of my questions. I don't need it to do everything on device. I just want it to make the device with all its things more functional to the voice yeah. activation. That would be incredible. I find myself, I use HomeKit for like my lights a lot and I, sometimes I'll ask it to do something. Like I was asking it to warm up the lights because they were really white and I want it like warmer white. And it said, sorry, I can't do that. And I just said, why? But it obviously can't, <laughs> it obviously can't respond. But I want to like, I'm, I want to learn like, why can't you do that? And what command do I need to do? I'm sorry, Ryan, I'll try to be better. Yeah, it's now responding in my pocket. But, you know, the, not just in like an annoyed why way, but like an actual like, okay, why didn't this work and how can I fix it? And I would love to see just follow-up questions come. That's a pretty basic thing. Yeah, that would be so just an easy, mm -hmm. give me one or two follow-up questions. Yeah, you know? just to be able to learn what I did wrong and then also maybe it can learn, like what was my intention and saying those words and then it can learn that that's how I'll probably phrase that in the future. And if I'm doing it, there's got bound to be other people out there that are doing the same thing and using the same wording. So I it just seems like it would be a great thing there. That's just one example. But what other things could you see? Or even just being able to teach it to do that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, uh, I, you know, in a lot of things, you get these, like, parameters in tons of software, right, that you can automate. So can it be an automation parameter? When I say X, Y, and Z, you do X, Y, and Z with the lights. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, times that into the future, maybe someone, like, is creating these packs in the third party and you get these like third party shortcut packs that you mm. have to buy from an AI app store and that they come in yeah. and that'd be awesome because we already have that kind of stuff for other programs like Final Cut or Logic or things like that you know mm -hmm. you create a plugin if we get these great AI plugins in the Siri where I'm sure people don't use this stuff as crazy as you do to need things like light temperature, but there's no reason it shouldn't exist for the person who does want that. Mm -hmm. And you'd be willing to pay five or 10 bucks to some app store, you know, yeah. app that might, you know, add this feature, right? Mm -hmm. Cause you use it all the time. So yeah. Yeah. And you could get your own, I guess your own personal kind of language that you deal with, with a Siri in the future, but that's a very specific thing. And also it's tough on this podcast now, every time they've changed the command to no longer have to say, hey, we just say the word Siri and now it activates. It's activating on my iPad here. I'm sure it's activating for some users. And I don't know. Should we just have like a code name? Like, yeah, Lady S or something yeah, like that. I Lady can't remember S. who said that. Lady S. Okay, that's our new code There's name for the rest of this upset, podcast. a lot you know, so <laughs> Lady S. But uh, anyways, what are some of the advantages of this on-device LLM now that it's confirmed? 
Well, really, it's just the privacy aspect. Every time you send a request to an LLM now, it goes back to their big server. The big server has all the data that can get it back to you faster, but it's not private. They're going to take that data, they're going to use it to train their model, and anything you said, which was actually like a big crazy deal that Samsung put something into an AI about its chipset and then accidentally leaked all its chip information to the rest oh. of the internet. Mm -hmm. So like... This is happening on really high levels. It's not just you and, you know, soccer yeah. practice. It's, you know, everyone's going to try to use this to make their uh, systems more efficient. And you can't be putting trade secrets into these things, yeah. you know, or else they're going to be open source to everyone at that point. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the things, privacy. The other thing is speed. So if you do a request on device, you don't have to send it to the cloud. You're not tethered by, you know, your internet connection or your cellular data range or you know mm -hmm. you're not killing your data every time you're making these things and the other thing is that we were talking about this a lot on this podcast is that it can constantly be waiting for something like a wake word so uh with lady s the only way it can be listening for your request is that it's actually listening all the time i don't think anyone wants to know that yeah um it's a very scary thought that that's how we get that kind of technology but there's no other way around it mm -hmm. so what you and Matt have talked about previously on this podcast is that it's always waking, waiting, listening in the background for you to make a request. So as you're talking, it could be listening and then going, they're talking about lights, they're talking about X, Y, or Z, and it might have preloaded answers mm -hmm. or at least the things in your word cloud already that you might be trying to use yeah. in order to give you a faster answer. So there's really creative ways to give you faster answers mm -hmm. to that. Now... The downsides are it might not be as accurate, especially with really detailed things. There can't be as many parameters. So you can't say, hey, Siri, read my, you know, 100 page contract and tell me uh, the ways I'm getting screwed up or, you know, it will only be able to take small requests, which I think is fine, especially because all of the added functionality, real functionality that we're talking about to make Siri a better mm -hmm. program to use on your phone. Yeah. That being said, there's a lot of cool things coming out in AI and LLMs with large tokens. Have you seen the Google Gemini demos where it's watching a movie? So Google Gemini has 1.5 billion parameters. It has the most out of any uh, LLM right now. That's what they're trying to figure out. It'll show it an entire movie, an entire two hours of an old movie, and it'll be like, what did the note say uh, that this character gave to this character? Hmm. So it has to be listening. It's transcribing the whole thing. It's watching it. And at no point do they read the text aloud. So it has to be able to look at the image and read the text on the image. So it's using all these multimodal features to watch and listen and transcribe this entire movie and give detailed answers mm -hmm. now does this work 100 percent of the time probably not but the fact that it's wor working at all is yeah. incredible <laughs> and so that's really you know the kind of thing that you're giving up with the on-device llm mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean you can't just have google gemini on your phone as an yeah. app and use it there well and that seems to be probably what apple's going to be trying to do they're going to have their own on-device llm and it will deliver all the features that make sense to people. They give us actual use cases to the general public, not just people that are really interested in AI. They'll show us like, here's this awesome feature we're delivering on iOS, I think it's 18. And this, by the way, happens to be enabled by AI. It's not just like, here are the AI features that we know you want. It's like, here are great features that we can convince you that you actually want. And they happen to be powered by AI. But yeah. on the other side of things, then they can partner with Google, which is the current rumor that they are going to be partnering with Google for Gemini support in iOS 18. Yeah, we'll really see. I think that's such a better approach. Like, just market it as usable features. Mm -hmm. Stop telling people AI is the cure-all for everything because it's not. And then the things that it's not are going to take a lot longer to fix because Machine learning has been used for decades now, mm -hmm. but we've just been using this term AI as a you know cure-all for everything. And even though it is really robust and we're going to be able to fix all these new problems, and it's awesome, they're going to happen at different rates. They have to, you mm -hmm. know? So we're not just going to be able to like flip on a light switch, GPT-5 comes out, and then no one works anymore, and then nothing yeah. ever happens. <laughs> this is going to be like a slow, gradual process into you know, these things. And the better way to sell them, like you're saying, is just one feature at a time. 
which I think Apple has been great at in the past, mm-hmm. you know? Like, here's the one thing you can't live without and the one thing that matters to you upgrading to this new device or not. Like, yeah. And give us five of those and a new update and, mm-hmm. like, everyone will switch over. Yeah, absolutely. Did you see this uh, Microsoft demo this week? What happened? I, th- I think it was called VASA. V-A-S-A is what the acronym is for it. And basically, it's like a hyper-realistic talking head and it can take oh. an audio file and then an image and it makes it look like the person said it. Yeah, oh my thing. gosh. So like it just you like one image and one like clip of someone's voice mm-hmm. and then it could just recreate them talking. Yeah, here. We'll play it right now and I'll give the details on this. It's essentially it's synchronizing lip movements with audio. It captures a large spectrum of facial nuances and head motion is what they say. And right now it is limited to 512 by 12, 512 videos, but up to 40 FPS. And yeah, it's just doing this all from a single static image, which the thing I think is crazy is the eyes are the thing that looks the weirdest to me right here that kind of tips it off, but it still does blink at one point and stuff like that, which is just crazy to take an image and make a pretty, pretty close representation of someone actually saying this thing. We've seen it before. Like I even watched this video detailing how LLMs work that you sent to me where it's Ryan Gosling explaining how they work yeah yeah really fascinating but it's all taken from his like i think vox interview or something yeah yeah and it's very clearly all taken from that versus you could get an image from of him from anywhere or you could even make an ai generated altered image of him and then make a video from that and yeah i i don't entirely know the use case here but what do you know what i mean we know what the use case is (laughs) it's like deep faking or trying to make content while you're not there Mm -hmm. um the craziest thing i thought about this is she kind of interrupts herself a little bit did you hear that when you watched the demo oh really she has this like very natural interruption Mm. and that was the crazy part to me that made it believable yeah i was like oh like ai just makes things perfect but the more imperfect ai makes stuff the more human it feels Mm -hmm. and so there was a couple things that i saw that were weird but if you just showed that to me And I've seen a lot of AI video. A lot of it's good, but not great. This was great. Yeah. And it's so great that I think they're not releasing it to the public, right? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess it's just a matter of time, though, probably, right? It's weird. (laughs) Well, they have this, too. So they have AI tools where you could take your image. It's basically made for content creators. Mm -hmm. So, like, you take your image, you take your thing, but they don't look good. This looks good, you know? Some of those. And we've talked about this in the past, but we need this AI legislation, like, tomorrow that is anything that is ai generated has to be labeled yeah. or you get fined like a million dollars the second we lose trust that someone's communicating it to us is real yeah and we don't have like clear watermarking of like mm-hmm. this is ai you can't lie about this being you or not for some stuff it doesn't matter if you're telling me there's a sale at a store or something like that or if you're selling me like just giving me information who cares as long as it's accurate information Mm -hmm. but if it's something coming from my mom that's telling me she's in trouble or something like that you know then we have a problem Mm -hmm. you know and we've seen that that that's the like scammer side of it that is kind of growing i think it was somewhere overseas that someone was tricked to transferring a bunch of money from their company to someone else yeah yeah they sent it to the cfo (laughs) yeah and they were tricked by email first they thought the email was scam they weren't going to get tricked but then it was they did a zoom call with deep fakes and it convinced them and they actually proceeded with that so that's that scary side of this and why microsoft probably isn't releasing this but did you see the sora demo you want to detail that one i did yeah so they did a new demo um for specifically a a talk that they were doing someone used sora and it is a stitched like drone shot of it Mm -hmm. going through a bunch of different um images and you can't really tell if it's like they generated this one prompt and said do a drone shot that goes through this and then goes through that and Mm -hmm. then you see this but if you did this with like cgi or tried to do it practical my god like it would be expensive yeah and there's still problems with it like all the sora videos but uh i've been i've been checking out these cool like uh you know artsy runway videos Mm -hmm. that are all like they look like they're made in the 70s they have tape distortion on them yeah and they have all these crazy you know like uh sci-fi looking things on them all the videos are like three seconds long so it's nothing too crazy you have to make it with runway runway just gives you three seconds Mm -hmm. and 
this stuff does look weird, but you almost want it to look weird because it's all sci-fi dystopian. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be this corner, like maybe we can't use Sora yet, or I'm sure Hollywood's trying to figure out every single way to use Sora, like, yeah. you know, tomorrow to, you know, get rid of CGI or just make CGI better, give them a mm-hmm. starting point or something like that, yeah. integrate it into their CGI workflow somehow. Yeah. The runway stuff is already cool. And it's this corner of the internet where you want to see that kind of stuff. There is this weird corner of the internet where, you know, people just want to see interesting images. Mm-hmm. And yes, you would have had to like, to get that three seconds, you would have had to build a set. You would have to like get your VCR camera or like your camcorder style video. You would have had to put everyone in these costumes and done this weird thing. And just to get that one three second image, you would have needed to spend $10,000. Yeah. And now, you know, we could put 10 of these images back to back. I'm not looking at that going like, this is going to replace movies, but I'd rather see that in my feed than, you know, someone telling me about, you know, some new restaurant or some other thing like that. It's interesting. It's creative. It really, you know, is inspiring to look at and go like, that's cool. Like we should do something with that. Yeah. And it's a great proof of concept now, you know, Mm -hmm. even the little stuff to go, uh, if we did do this, there is an audience. And I guarantee that channel is going to grow to like one of these channels that does something like this. It's going to grow to a million subs Mm -hmm. and then they're going to get their own movie. Yeah. Because really the whole goal of this is to build an audience, you know? Mm -hmm. And so once someone builds an audience on a TikTok or an Instagram or something and then proves concept for someone in Hollywood, then you can really take these things and run with it and go, here's our most popular characters from these things. It's all tested already. And it's almost like, you know, before you would have designers drawing things and then that has to go to a committee of whoever's making the movie, the director. And then those people have to go, oh, I like this or I like that. And then it makes the movie and then, you know, you get something in a Star Wars where you're like, this isn't even close to feel like Star Wars. Why would you put that in the movie? You know? Mm-hmm. And so uh, the foxes or whatever. I'm like, what are these foxes in the the new Star Wars doing in Star Wars? The ice foxes? Uh-huh. Do you remember those? Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think they belong there? Probably not. No, yeah. <laughs> it does feel a little odd. No, but now you can use something to test these in advance and just see how people respond to them. And you have like a social media tested, you know, thing Mm -hmm. without investing a ton of money. And you can show it to them back to back to back. What do you think the best Star Wars thing is? And then expand the universe based on the fan base and not based on a designer who might not know the huge history of Star Wars or something like that. Yeah, it's like... um very affordable way to do concept art that is really engaging and gets kind of everyone on board. And then you could spend all that money that you're talking about to make that shot in the real world and make it into a full length movie. But also long term, in theory, the AI is going to be able to generate much more than three seconds and be able to generate that full movie for you based on that, which is pretty crazy. And then it brings out the idea of like, what does that mean for actors and what does that mean for celebrities? So I think you were telling me a little bit about like celebrity AIs. Oh and where yeah. That is now. And so it, it's super cool. Um, and this isn't just for celebrity AI. It's also to make like 3d video game uh, assets in mm. blender. And so there's this huge room with a sphere full of cameras around everyone. And so before just to get 3d images in blender, they're just taking photos, right? Mm-hmm. They're just taking photos that goes into Blender. You can get someone in one of those, like, you know, suits with all the sensors on them to jump around and do whatever. And now you have that character in your digital world that has, you know, very accurate because of all these pictures you took. And it all happens automatically. Crazy already. Yeah. Now they're doing all that with video to create these. Mm. And you see the actors emoting. So, like, they'll, you know, oh, you know, act surprised, act do this. And they literally have, like, you know, their entire acting range now being captured in video by all these spheres. Mm. And it is insane. (laughs) And that's what they're using to, you know, create these digital representation of these actors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they're going to need to be really smart with their contracts because so much as new technology develops, people get screwed over, you Mm -hmm. know, with the, with streaming and stuff like that. The music industry got screwed over by the tech industry. It used to be, uh, uh, Sony had a patent on CDs and everyone had to pay a royalty. (laughs) Uh, every time so someone sold a CD, they needed to pay Sony a royalty. Mm-hmm. Or was it Philips? It might be Philips. One of those two companies. Don't quote me. Someone will, someone yeah. will correct me in the comments. But, uh, you know, to think now that we have this new technology 
and that someone's going to sign a deal that's like, oh yeah, I'll give away all my AI rights for like X amount of million dollars. And then they're using that not only for like the next hundred years, you now become a celebrity for like the next <laughs> thousand years, hundred yeah. thousand years that we have these things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're going to be selling, you know, Mars candy on. <laughs> yeah. Things that I guess your estate will be selling using your likeness to provide for themselves in the future. If that even matters though, because it'll be so easy to do it. Celebrities might be less of a thing. I don't, there's so many tangents to go off there. yeah and maybe it's just stuff they don't like doing you know yeah. i don't want to do that ad can you just have the ai do the ad you mm-hmm. know but yeah to get us back to what we were talking about before like this is all cool ai stuff that is going on and we're seeing all these huge advances and all these ways it's being used in art and all sorts of different things but the most exciting thing right now that we're hearing, I guess, on the Apple side is that LLMs on device are actually confirmed. So a lot of these advanced features, I think we could see long term. I see, think we could see some photo stuff definitely come. Yeah. Maybe some video stuff and generation come through Apple. It just seems kind of inevitable if they're training and learning and the, they can enable these features, um, but they just have to get the first iteration out there and... That's coming up here soon, and I think I'm hoping Siri gets yeah to a level that we can call it pro. I would love that. 